Kansas State wrecked a lot of people's brackets this year in the March Madness Tournament by knocking off Kentucky in the second round. I'm going to show you how they use principles of the gap theory to get easy buckets for each other the entire game, eventually going on to win and move to the Sweet 16. Let's get into it. K-State comes down here and ends up getting a wide open layup and all they did was make two passes. No plays, no sets, just good basketball. Let's see how they did it. The first thing that the point guard recognizes is he's being guarded by a post player. This is a mismatch. More times than not, he's going to be able to drive past him, so he's going to attack a gap to his dominant hand and try and force help. As soon as this defender comes over, he's got two people guarding him, which as you can see, makes Ish wide open as he slides to the corner. The ball gets kicked out, and this is our third principle, drive a bad closeout. 22's out of control, he's going to drive back to the middle and get downhill and try and attack the paint. As soon as he gets right here to the paint, another make two guard one. As he steps up, we dish it off to Tomlin, wide open bucket. In this action, Keontae Johnson's gonna get a corner isolation. As soon as he breaks his defender down, drives baseline, the help defender steps up, another layup for Tomlin. The key to this play is Johnson getting past his defender and forcing 34 to step over like he does right there, making two guard one. Tomlin recognizes the drive, he tees up to the front of the rim, Johnson knows he's open, we get another easy layup. Let's break down why this stuff actually works. As soon as Noel gets this dribble handoff, he's gonna recognize the slower defender is guarding him. More times than not, he's gonna be able to drive past him and all he has to do is force somebody else to help. And as soon as that happens, one of his teammates are gonna be open and it creates a chain reaction. That chain reaction is the gap theory. Noel gets through the gap, he gets two paint, and the key to this whole thing is trying to make two people guard one. That's gonna open up somebody else to be open. As soon as he lands, you can see that four people are guarding him because of all the attention that he drew on that drive. It's an obvious read to kick it out to the corner to Johnson, and now Johnson has to make the right read when he catches it. This is one of the most important reads that perimeter players have to make. You can tell right here that the defender is out of control as he's closing out, trying to not give up a three. And so Johnson makes the right read by shot faking, driving back to the middle to get downhill to paint. Because of this drive, now Johnson gets two people to guard one. In this situation, there's three people guarding one, and Johnson just has to make the right read, and K-State's going to get an open shot. It is really important as a perimeter player to see this drive and understand that we have to slide with the basketball to create a space and angle for Johnson to throw this basketball out. As he throws it out, if that backside defender comes up and he helps, all you gotta do is go one more to the corner and there's nobody left, Tomlin gets a wide open three. Unfortunately, what happens is Johnson takes one extra dribble, doesn't kick it out, and it results in a turnover. There's no guarantee that by using these concepts you're going to score every possession, but as you can see, understanding these concepts is going to create good offense for your team. In these last two clips, we're going to take a look at ball screens and see how they're a part of the gap theory and why everybody's running them because they get wide open shots. K-State's going to run a horns action here, which is simply two middle ball screens in the middle third of the court, and he can choose to go either direction. As he comes off to the right, we're going to get our second principle of the gap theory, make two guard one. As soon as Noel gets two people guarding one, he's got to get his eyes to the backside defenders. There's only two left. He recognizes that the bottom defender is cheating out towards his man, so he knows he's going to get his roll. He takes one extra dribble, dumps it off, and gets an easy bucket. Now this last clip is big time. As Marquise comes off this middle ball screen, he's going to engage two defenders like we talked about before, and this is almost going to look the same as the last clip. You have to keep in mind that Marquise is only about 5'7", so the pass he's about to make is incredible. 
we get to the exact same spot with two people guarding one, Marquise gets his eyes to the middle and recognizes those backside defenders. If you notice the bottom defender, he's cheating over more in this play than he was in the last play. Marquise knows that he can throw this thing to the opposite corner because of the help and he's gonna be open for a three. Cam chooses to go one time to Johnson and now Johnson can make the decision, do I drive this bad close out or do I shoot it? He ended up shooting it and missing it, but it's still a rhythm three for one of the best scores on the team, which is great offense. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure you check out our gap theory breakdown where we're gonna talk more in depth about how all this stuff works and how you can learn to see it on the court. We also have a ball screen breakdown where we'll teach you all things ball screens and learn what a 45 cut is. Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.